Right, I'm ready for assembling everything now. I've got everything made. I've made all the components now. Uh, I'll just show you these little components here that I've, I probably said I was going to go away and make them and I've not shown you me doing them. But that's the actual clasp now. And it says put a, an 8BA screw in that, but I didn't have one, so I've put an M3 in with that little spring attached. So that's the clasp. And then the other part that goes in the clasp is the latch. And that's just a T section with a 1 16th hole in the end and you've got to elongate that hole horizontally so that your latch lever moves in an arc without it binding. It's a bit bit tricky that because it's it's a bit of trial and error that you've got to put a slot in and just fiddle around with it until you get it to work properly. So that's the latch that fits in the clasp. And then the other part which I hadn't shown you with this actual lever. And they're all in stainless steel. And what I did, I machined all that up and put the holes in while the stock material was still on it. And then when I'd done all the, the slots and the holes and got it to shape on the end, I sawn the stock material off and then just filed this radius on at the very end. So I'm ready for assembling it now. And uh, if you remember, I, I told you I'd riveted that bracket on. I've already done that. And then what you have to do is the little pivot pin that you've made or will be making that's going to attach the lever to the bottom of the reversing stand so that's going to go in that little hole at the bottom and you've got to make everything a nice nice fit so you've got no slop in the in the lever when it's when it's working then I'm going to put that lever onto that pin and I'm going to put a little washer on that and then a split pin a 1 16th split pin is going to hold all that together and I'm, I've got to cut that to length yet so I'm not going I'm just it's just in temporary for now I've got to cut it to length then the other part of the stand is going to fit onto there and it's going to fit on with two M4 bolts with a spacer in between and that spacer is the same width as the handle so once you've got your spacers attached to the, the other part of the stand you can then thread that on like so and what I'm going to do I'm going to put a I'm going to put a, a washer and a locking washer on and then a nut same on the other side Right, I'll just nip them up. Uh, wrong one. Right, that's the lever attached. So now we'll come to the the clasp. So you've got to thread your latch into your clasp, like so. 
and that's going to hold onto the lever with them two holes there so we've just got to line them two holes up and I'm going to put two M3 screws in there I'm using metric because I've got stainless steel in metric and I've not got stainless in BA so that's the reason I've got metric route and then what I've done I've put clearance hole in front side at clasp and then I've tapped it M3 at the back and I'm going to put a locking nut on the back and lock tight it on so that's got to go on there like that you've got to be careful, you don't want to nip it too much where it stops the latch from operating that's it so when that latch is fully up to that stop it should clear all your your, your radius on your reversing stand it should just clear it and then when it gets to the last slot it should drop into that last slot like so and everything's a bit tight because there's no oil on anything yet so that's the latch fitted now we'll come to the latch lever and that's going to fit in this top pivot hole and I'm going to put a, another M3 screw in that I've actually put a, a little bronze bush in there it, it don't tell you to do that but I thought I'd while I were doing it I might as well put a, a brass or a bronze bush in with it being a pivot point it don't really matter and then that's going to have that nut on the back of that and eventually I'll lock tight these nuts on with a little washer behind like that so the little hole in the top of the latch that one that I said you got to elongate horizontally you've got to get that lined up now with the latch lever and put a pin in hopefully put a pin in if I can get it lined up just bear with me a minute that's it look and what I'm going to do with them pins I'm going to it, it actually tells you to put a sellock pin or a roll pin in but I've not got one that small so I'm going to put these rivets in I'm going to put a thread on and a nut eventually so that's that's got the latch lever fitted and that's what's lifting your latch up like so and now I've got to attach this spring so it automatically locks into the slots so I've got to put this pin in again with them I'm going to fasten it on back with a little nut everything's so small this could be a bit fiddly this I've got to get that spring on that pin now let's have a try then missed try again if at first you don't succeed try try and try right let's have a try
Got it. Just got to get it threaded through the other side now. That's it. That's it. Right, so that should automatically drop into them slots now. Look, and there's, there's no oil on this, so everything's a bit tight. Just make sure you can get all your slots. And that's it. So I've just got to finish these little, you know, cut these split pins down, fasten these pins on by whatever means, lock tight these nuts on, and that's it, job finished. And that's going to fit onto Loco that way round. So this is the back, that's the front, back front, and it's going to be sandwiched in between cab floor and the stand, so I can't put it on yet till I've done the cab floor for this side, so that'll probably be my next job. Anyway, uh, that's it, the reversing stand completed. I've just got to make a couple of pivot pins now for the reach rod. One will fit to this end and then one to the uh, slides on the other end. Once I've got it fitted then I can determine what length I want. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting and thanks for watching and I'll catch you on my next video then. Bye for now then.